And I'm going to take a few minutes here to do a comparison of the mature bark between red maples and sugar maples. I often get comments and questions on my videos, some of which I can answer with words, and some of which are best answered with videos. I did a vi video answer to this uh, question about the, the, the comparison of these two barks a few days ago. I wasn't completely satisfied with the quality of the video, but um, didn't have time to correct it. But I'm back here at the Fort Ancient State Memorial a couple days later. We got a little bit more even light today. These higher overcast days make for better, better videos, in my opinion. I like hiking on sunny days, but the camera gets a little confused. So here we are. We've got a red maple. 12 to 14 inches in diameter with lots of vertical lines and where we have these flakes there's a break on both sides so you can see there's a crack on both sides of this flatter area and right next to it is a sugar maple of the same size so it has some pattern here too, some flatter topped areas, and it has cracks on both sides. But as these trees get larger, we're going to take a look here and see that often the cracks on the sugar maple does not break on both sides. It tends to flake uh, on one side or the other, but not both. Color-wise, there's not a big difference in the color, but I find that the uh, red maple is just a little bit more of a darker gray and a dull gray and the sugar maple tends to be just a little bit brighter almost a tannish gray so a little bit more of a brown gray color and these are 12 to 14 inch diameter trees let's pause for just a minute and continue on and here's another tree of similar size but uh, maybe just a little smoother in places it does have these cracks Plates are a little wider between the cracks. And this one is quite a bit different than a similarly sized sugar maple just right next to it here. So if we can get these trees side by side, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. And in this park here, we've got some steeper rolling hills to my right in a flatter swampy area to my left in the two neighborhoods you know, in this park, the red maples are pretty much in the poorer drained soils and the sugar maples are in the better grain, drained soils and the two neighborhoods or habitats overlap right here. When I started this channel, I did these trees separately because I hadn't found a place where I could film them both together. Since then I have. So let's continue on with our study. We've got a much larger red maple right behind me here and a much larger sugar maple just off to the uh, right of me. So we're going to stop and we'll continue on in just a moment. And this is along what's called the Mound Trail at the Fort Ancient State Memorial, which is known for its mounds. There's several large circular mounds on this trail, and the mounds that surround the park are on a different trail and around the uh, mowed areas. It's a fascinating place for natural history and human history. Here we've got a red maple that looks really big and is big. It probably isn't that old. These trees grow really fast. If you ever cut one down or used red maple lumber, soft maple lumber, it is much softer and the growth rings are much further apart than that of hard maple, maple or sugar maple. So this guy, I got a 40 inch hiking stick here. And this guy here is almost as wide as this hiking stick, 36 inches I would say. So we'll call this a mature red maple. It may not be even 100 years old, but it's a big one. And here we've got that bark again. It's At this point, all of the bark has these vertical lines with flat plateaus between them, and it is loose or flaked on both sides. And um, just a little reading on the root system of these trees. Uh, it can vary. But in a poorly drained area like this, they tend to not have a tap root because it really isn't necessary to get the water they need. And there's a, um, a thick layer of silt and clay in the subsoil around here called a fragipan that makes it almost impossible for these trees to send down a tap root. So the rooting system isn't that much different on these trees. Both can be shallow rooted or tap rooted depending on the habitat. 
So the bottoms of the trees don't look that much different from what I can see. Let's um, pause for just a minute and we'll get to a much larger three foot diameter sugar maple just off to my side here and resume. And I'm always amazed, you know, when I'm trying to do a scripted hike, I have plans for what I want to cover and mother nature either adds to the plans or deviates me from the plans, but I can't help but film some things if I find them. I was en route to uh, relocate that three foot diameter sugar maple tree that was off trail. And I just found a perfect illustration of the rooting system on a large sugar maple tree here. We can also look at the bark here. Um, again, this, these trees, from what I just read, uh, will set down a tap root where the conditions allow. This flatter land in this part of southwest Ohio has a fragipan, which is a dense layer of packed silt and clay. And if you look underneath this tree, it almost looks like mud, and it is mud, but when it gets dry, there's no getting through it. It's basically concrete during the drier months of the year. But look at how wide the base of this tree is. It's probably 40 feet across. And um, let's look at the flaking and the uh, texture of this. This is probably almost a three foot diameter sugar maple tree. And it's laying down. And it may still have enough roots intact that it may actually leaf out and grow vertically from this position this growing season. Uh, often trees will do that. They don't always completely die if there's still some connection with the ground. Not sure if a sugar maple will do that, but the birches often do that. The yellow birches are notorious for laying down and look like they're dead, and then and then they come right back over boulders and over logs. But um, here's our flakes. So it's attached on one side, but not on the other. And that's a common pattern you're going to find on some of the flakes on these larger sugar maple trees that you don't find on the red maple trees. We'll pause for just a minute and continue on. And here's a large sugar maple, the size of the red maple I just filmed a few minutes ago. There's my 40 inch hiking stick and it's as wide as the roots of this tree and just the, the tree itself I'm guessing is about 36 inches, just like the red maple. This one is a little bit lighter tan than on an average. This tree's quite pale, so there is some variability. And we don't see those hors, these uh, vertical lines that continue for many, many inches like we do on the red maple. I think that's a pretty good giveaway for the larger trees. Um, the flakes are on one side, not on both sides, so it flakes off to the one side on most of these flakes but not on both sides for all of them a lot of them are, are attached on one side but not on the other and there are a few little chunks here that are have broke free on both sides but um, they're certainly not as large or as straight lined as the cracks and chunks on the red maple I'm gonna stop this video series for now but this is a subject that could be revisited at many locations at many opportunities and uh, I got some hikes planned in a couple days here that might be able to find even more examples of this but we'll stop for now and um, these are both common trees it's good to be able to tell them apart for a lot of reasons especially if you're into harvesting wood for commercial value and this sugar maple is definitely more valuable wood and for tapping them for maple sugar and maple syrup production